Welcome to the conversation at airsafe.com with your host, Dr. Todd Curtis. This show is a bit of a departure from past shows as it features a segment from the Discovery Channel series, Survive This, about the emergency landing of JetBlue Flight 292 on September 15, 2005. I served as an on-camera expert on this episode, providing commentary about the event. Although the landing gear problem that led to the emergency did not put the aircraft in any great risk, the circumstances of the incident turned it into a major media event. It took place during prime television viewing time, and it happened in Los Angeles, one of the biggest media markets in the English-speaking world. As the event unfolded over several hours, CNN and other national networks interrupted their regular programming. There was still intense interest in the story days later, well out of proportion to the amount of risk faced by the people on board the aircraft. That kind of media interest led to the Discovery Channel featuring this event in the first episode of the series Survive This, a show that featured video clips of near disasters. There are a number of cameras that recorded the event, including several inside the plane. One of those videos was a key part of the Survive This segment. Incidentally, my portion of the show was shot on one of the sets used in the 2002 movie, Catch Me If You Can. What follows is that segment from Survive This. For those of you listening to the audio version of this podcast, visit podcast.airsafe.org for links to the video version. Next, a rare look at a crippled jet's emergency landing from the inside. September 21st, 2005. Comedian Dave Reinitz turns on his video camera once his flight from Burbank to New York City starts to go very wrong. Second by second, Dave records the flight crew preparing passengers for an emergency landing. Please, everyone, locate the exit closest to you at this time. There are eight emergency exits. Then the words every passenger dreads, the stark command to brace for impact. Brace, brace, brace. As aviation experts investigate how a cross-country commute like Dave's can become such a close call, Dave relives the most amazing day of his life. It begins like any other. With his video camera and a carry-on bag, he heads to the Burbank Airport to board JetBlue Flight 292 to New York. Soon after takeoff, a landing gear warning light betrays the first sign of trouble. The seatback monitors soon reveal the startling truth. The nose landing gear is stuck at a 90 degree angle. Then they focused in on the landing gear. They had this really tight shot of the landing gear and, and, you know, and it was totally twisted the wrong way. My first thought was, wow, poor folks on that plane. And then I realized, that's the plane I'm on. It's absolutely surreal to be watching this story of the plane of your ear. Then it got very scary and it got very real. The pilot announces the aircraft must divert to LAX for an emergency landing. So that's when I turned the camera on myself and, you know, and I taped the message saying goodbye to my girlfriend. On the ground, FAA air traffic control supervisor Sherry Avery shifts the LAX tower into emergency mode. There were approximately 24 firefighting vehicles, including three helicopters. 20 ambulances. The reality hits that there's many, many lives at stake, so we need to do everything right. On board flight 292, Dave keeps his camera rolling. So I have the camera and I'm shooting things around me, and then the an announcement comes over. Place your feet flat and firmly on the floor. Of course, your wrists on the seat back in front of you. Lean forward and place your forehead on your wrist. The one moment that really took over in terms of, wow, I might, I might not make this, was in the process of making the decision of, you know, whether to crash land like this or like that. I mean, you don't think you're gonna be in a position where you have to decide what position you wanna be in when you might die. Then Dave's camera captures the chilling announcement. Brace, brace, brace. So at that moment, it just, that was the last flush of kind of realization that this could be it. Next, for the passengers of Flight 292, the moment of truth. Brace, brace, brace. 
but I know that we're coming in and it's, it's happening, it's happening right now. And, and you can feel it hit. The flight attendants in the back are screaming it, brace. And people are starting to cry and they're upset. And then as he brings the nose gear down, you can feel this shake and start. For a little while, there's nothing for a couple of seconds, and then there's sparks. And the heart starts pounding a little bit, and then there's flames. Now my heart's pounding pretty fast. It just starts to shake, and then it smells like burning rubber, and it's just, it's very intense. And then we realized that it, you know, it was slowing down. Slowing down. Hey, we're still here. No fire, no injuries. The relief passengers exit the plane to board a bus, and Dave zooms in for one last remarkable shot. And I could see just a little bit of the landing gear, so I took the camera and I just focused in on it. And you could just see where it was just shaved almost perfectly in half. It was amazing. It was just amazing. For Dr. Richard Curtis, the tape offers vital clues to why Flight 292 escaped disaster. The most important thing is to keep that nose up. If the pilots keep that nose up, everything will be just fine. At this point, what I'm doing is burning off uh, additional fuel. Uh, we took off. There are a couple of reasons why you'd want to burn the fuel load down. Like most large jet transports, fuel is kept in two general places. One would be the wing tanks on either wing, and another place would be in a center fuel tank in the fuselage. By burning fuel from the fuselage tank first, the plane's center of gravity shifts aft towards the rear of the aircraft. This allows the pilot to keep the nose up as long as possible, reducing stress on the nose landing gear. You see the first set of vibrations there. That's from the main landing gear of the aircraft touching down on the runway. But as you can see, there's not really that much vibration. There are several things they normally do on landing, all of which would increase the kind of vibration we'd see during landing. In a normal landing, once the main landing gear are down, the pilots would engage the engine's thrust reversers and raise the wing spoilers. Both procedures increase drag to slow the plane, but also decrease lift. This time, to keep the plane's nose up, the pilot did not engage them. Here's the center line of the runway, and you can see how close the pilot had gotten the wheel to it after all was said and done. This particular airline that was involved in this incident, they have an extremely safe record. So they were as good as the best airlines in the country, the best airlines in the world. It was interesting because in the beginning of the day, all I wanted to do was get to New York. At the end of the day, all I wanted to do was get home and see my girlfriend. So you never know what a day has in store for me. Bye. Bye, dear. For more information about this event, including links to the audio and video versions of the show, please visit podcast.airsafe.org. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you next time.